It can be said that the pursuit of truth often makes progress tick. However, in the world of software vendors, truth can be difficult to come by when the latest technology does not fit in with the design of your product. As such, today we're going to discuss some of the crazy claims of software vendors, and in particular how you can sort between fact and fiction. So Janice, there's a lot of conflict out there in the supply chain world. Um, so what's your initial overview? I mean, the long-standing joke at Locad has been that the only way we Locad could compete with the claims of our competitors was that we are curing cancer too. So, you know, we are not only making your supply chain better, we are saving lives. We have to, this is the level of claims that we have, uh, that, that, uh, that, that we, we have to, uh, to challenge. So, and, and more seriously, I mean, the thing is supply chain, uh, especially when it comes to supply chain performance, not just uh, asset management. Asset management is, is very, I would say, straightforward. You know, uh, do you have like the digital counterparts of some piece of inventory? Can you move physically something and have the electronic, you know, movement as a counterpart? That's the, the med management side of the equation in terms of uh, asset management. This part, I mean, yes, people are making crazy claims, but they are not that crazy actually. And um, where it, things get really, I would say, really insane is on the supply chain optimization side. And there are, there are plenty of reasons. I mean, first, because it's so hard to debunk uh, the claims just because supply chains are complex. There are many, many moving parts. It's very difficult to attribute, you know, a, uh, the, the, who is responsible, who, is the, wh who or what uh, is the root cause of a problem. So it's the responsibility is like super diffuse. That's uh, a property of, I would say, that many complex system shares. Um, so in this, I would say, in this environment, if you're a vendor, it's, it's very, very tempting uh, to go, I would say, full-blown on superlatives. And that's literally the state of affairs of the supply chain world. Yeah, and it brings up kind of a lot of kind of ethical considerations, doesn't it? Um, so is there any kind of unwritten rules out there, any sort of lines that vendors shouldn't cross? Yes, and the, the, the funny thing is that um, in terms of lines that vendors should not cross, Romans, you know, 2,000 years ago, had already figured that out. They have uh, engineered in part of the Roman law, you know, the idea of bonus dollars. So it's, it's like literally the good lie, the bonus dollars. The doll is uh, the lie in, in Latin. So, and what does that mean? It means that if you're on a market and there will be somebody who is screaming, best chicken, best chicken, you know, uh, this will be the meal of your life uh, that will be, you know, make all your family happy, buy my chicken, etc. These sort of things that you will find, you know. And, and here, the question, and the Romans were asking the question, is it reprehensible, you know, to, to lie like that? Because obviously, what are the odds that, you know, this specific chicken is going to be the meal of your life? Yes, maybe, maybe not, you know. I mean, obviously, this is a dubious claim, let's say. And yet, um, and yet the, from the Roman law perspective, say, no, it's a bonus dollars, it's a good lie. It's, it's a lie that is, um, that is just, you know, uh, it, it's just like um, uh, the, the, the habits of, you know, people on the market. Nobody really believes them. It's, it's, it's agreed upon that it's, it's mostly, you know, that you should not take this claim literally. It's just a way to attract your attention. You know, and, and, and the guy is not really lying because you know it's not true in the first place. So it's, so it's okay. Just, just, and, and you have plenty of things in, I would say, in, in, in consumer advertising where you're, you're washing whiter than white, you're cleaner than clean, or, you know, this sort of things. It's, a, it's literally you're playing on that. And um, there is like the idiotic perception is say, oh, those brands are taking that uh, c consumers are idiots. No, because brands, they knew that customer, c customers aren't idiots. They know that it should not be taken too literally. But by the way, there is a fine line and you have to make really sure that when you're lying, people really understand that, that it should not be interpreted literally. And, uh, and for example, in, in, there was a court ruling in France, um, uh, I think two decades ago, where basically there was an advertising for the lottery where the, the advertising went, 100% of the winners uh, bought a ticket. <laughs> so should you. And technically, it was actually a very a completely valid claims, but 
people were misunderstanding as 100% of the people who buy a ticket are going to win. And so it was ruled out that although this claim was mathematically provably completely correct, <laughs> it was ruled out as, as, as being a lie because it was actually, you know, playing on the bonus dollars on the other side to basically, you know, uh, misguide people, although, you know, it was correct. So again, the, the idea is um, the sort of client defined lines, if I'm to wrap it up, is Romans said it's okay to lie if it's, if it's a convention and everybody knows that you lie, then it's fine. If you're actually trying to convince people of that, uh, that's very, very wrong and that's reprehensible. Okay, so that's some of the maybe kind of good lies, so to speak. Um, but the line's certainly quite fuzzy. So when would you say that software vendors kind of cross that line and sort of head into the bad lies territory? I believe that there is a line to be crossed when you are bringing expertise. You know, uh, uh, and here imagine you, you have the guy on the market that is screaming, best fish, freshest fish. He's not a, a worldwide expert in fish freshness. You know, he doesn't really claim. He's just a guy on a, a you know sitting there and, and selling his stuff. But if suddenly on the same market you 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 you, you set up a podium and you bring professors that says that after decades of studies, they see that this vendor has released the freshest fish and that numerous studies are proving that this is the freshest and that will give you, you know, the, the highest degree of provable happiness and whatnot, then that's a completely different story. And, and here, I believe that the lines is, obviously, you know, if you're serious about pieces of supply chain tech, you should have expertise and some rationality behind it and maybe let's call it science. Yes, but, but is it? And, and you, you really need to challenge whether what you're doing is just, um, you know, um, uh, fancy marketing, disguised as science, or actual science and, and actual video with actual rationality taking place. And where I think that the line for, for the supply chain, software supply chain world is that uh, very frequently um, uh, people are putting forward, you know, stuff that has the, all the attributes of good science. It looks like good science. You know, it has numbers, formulas, incomprehensible jargon uh, with, with keywords that you don't understand. You know, you, you can go do the, the supply chain bingo with uh, dimension sensing, blockchain, AI, and cloud computing. Bingo, 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 and all, all the jargon. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very well established and proven. There is so much science, uh, but is it? And here, th where really it's, uh, it's, I believe, it's ethically reprehensible is that very frequently it's, um, it's, it's nothing. There is nothing to back those claims. It's literally, um, uh, it's literally theater. Okay, but everyone's kind of desperate to be involved in kind of the latest crazes. Um, and particularly with those kind of buzzwords, would you say there's almost kind of a bit of a maybe FOMO of people wanting to be involved in them <laughs> and adding them to their website is just kind of a bit of that? Yeah, I mean, here again, as a supply chain vendors, you're, you're, you're facing this situation where, uh, I mean, most companies are in, in this space not innovative at all. So the, the problem is that, okay, you're selling a product that has like zero differentiation whatsoever from the guy next door. I don't believe it's a case for LOCAD, but uh, you, you can say that I'm very severely biased in my opinion with, in that regards. But the, the, my casual observation is that it's mostly it's, it's the differentiation is just minimal across dozens of, of, uh, of software products. So literally, and then <clears throat> uh, you, you have some psychological tricks, you know, that are not even rocket science, is that um, you want to hook people on, on things like, oh, uh, you know, there is this massive turn. If you don't take it, you know, it's going to be so bad. So, so you, you, please, uh, I mean, not please, I mean, you have to take the turn. And, and so you have to instillate fear so that, uh, that, that bring attention to, to your business. And one way to instillate fears is basically to have a constant stream of concepts that looks like so important for your career so that you're going to go the way of the dodo. You know, if you don't get this point 10 years down the road, you're obsolete. You know, you can play on the fear of people. So you say, and, and by the way, I'm doing you a favor in educating you so that you're not obsolete, you know, carry, carry rise. 
And that's, that's, I would say, in the corporate world, that's, um, that's a very powerful message. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tiny, dumb, psychological tweak, but even if you're aware, uh, there is a, a certain asymmetry you know, of risk. Well, in, on one hand, you're, going, you're most likely about to waste one hour with a vendor um, doing crazy claims, so you're going to waste one hour of your life. On the other hand, if by any chance this vendor is right, that can save you, you know, a, 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 a dramatic you know, turn of your career that you didn't take, and so putting you on, on, on a very, very bad track accidentally. And, and if you just look a, a couple of decades behind, there has been such turns, and you know, with, with the internet, with, with a series of things, where people who didn't take the train we're really left on the side. So, so I mean, yes, the problem is real, and and but and as a vendor, you can play on this fear, uh, which is a valid concern. But if you're only you know playing on the fear with no no substance whatsoever to back your claim, then then basically uh, this is fraud. This is intellectual fraud. But you could argue that there are a lot of people out there trying to kind of influence your views. Um, us at Loka TV doing weekly kind of editions on the latest kind of subjects. We're kind of one of them. Um, so how can you actually kind of analyze the market and sort between what is good and what is bad? At some point, there is no substitute for in-depth, you know, understanding of what's going on. You know, there, there is no substitution. You can't, you, you can't delegate common sense. You can't delegate, you know, vague, at least vague understanding of, of, the, of, of the supply chain problem at hand. So, uh, and, and by the way, I believe that's, that's what we are, we, are, we are trying to do here. I, I, I'm not usually, I, I'm not trying to convince people, at least not too much, that Locad is such a great product, but rather that there are a series of problems that deserves attention. And then, um, and then that those problems can be looked at from, uh, you know, very diverse set of angles and usually, um, there is more to the mainstream way of looking at the problem. Uh, and that's what we did, for example, in the episode for the SKU. You have something that a SKU is so simplistic, but there are so many angles of how you can look at the SKUs. That's how what we, and then sometimes you have many viewpoints that are very mainstream and very misguided. ABC analysis, safety stocks, service level are just a few of them. So uh, m my point is, is literally that um, is, Education is a big part, I think, of, uh, of the solution. And, uh, and I believe that whenever you know, uh, a vendor resort to an argument of authority, especially when they're saying, trust us, it's, it's, it should be you know, a red flag. This is not a good argument. And uh, you really want to have a good, solid understanding of what's going on. And by the way, um, for example, another sort of red flag that I see all over the place is that people are saying, oh, we are using AI. And whenever you ask question to the vendor of what the hell is, uh, what the hell is this AI, people have no freaking clue. And my answer is, if you're, if, you're, if you're making a claim about a big buzzword, you should be able right away to give a three hours lecture on all the technicalities that are associated with this buzzword. Otherwise, you, you don't know what you're selling. You need to go deep uh, with those vendors to, 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 to probe those, those claims, um, not through, I would say, stuff that can be completely fake, like, like case studies, you know, where it can be you know, made up numbers with made up quotes, with made up clients, with made up everything, quite literally. You would think that people would not dare to, to lie completely in making up case, sed case studies, but, well, it's actually, you know, it's not that difficult to, uh, to, to, to actually do that. Okay, so case studies is probably one good example. Um, so there's obviously a lot of money to be made by making kind of these kind of claims. Um, so what's to sort of stop those software vendors from really just lying? I mean, are there people discussing these things in forums? You mentioned there's case studies. Can we have testimonies from potential, from existing clients? Like how, can we, how can we ensure they're telling the truth? So, so first, uh, <laughs> there is very little that actually stop anybody from, you know, making outrageous claims nowadays. It's very funny because, um, Obviously, if, you, if, if you're saying positive things, obviously, if, you, if you're disparaging 
anybody, you know, on the internet, especially on things like race, you're going, you know, you, you, the world is going to get at you and, and, and rightly so. But if you do the opposite, which is something, instead of saying something bad, you do say something good, but it's, it's just as much a lie and it's as much nonsensical. Just on one side, you're just very negative against something or someone. On the other side, you just make a massive lie, but you're just on the other side where you're positive. And we have this enormous asymmetry where we recognize that saying something that is, uh, you know, atrociously bad about somebody is, is, is actually quite bad, it's reprehensible. If you just say something that is completely wrong, but it's very, very positive about something, then it's, it's completely okay. No, 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 it's not, not even close. So first, so, and nowadays I would say most, most companies get away with, I would say, insane lies. I mean, when I was looking at my LinkedIn feed, um, uh, because you see, I, I got a lot of invites from people working for competitors. So on my LinkedIn feeds, I got all the sales team of my own competitors who have invited me so that they can see who is in my own network and whatnot. Well, whatever, fair games. So I can, I, I can enjoy all the, the, you know, the, the, the corporate um, uh, the corporate communication of most of my competitors. And for example, the claim of the day, I'm not going to quote which competitor was, was uh, that they had a forecasting technology that was more inclusive than that they have, they have actually engineered inclusiveness in their forecasting technology. And I was thinking, how can I actually, you know, challenge that claim? That's such a level of, of bullshit, let's say it, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm all for inclusiveness, don't get me wrong, but let's be real, a forecasting technology has nothing to do with inclusiveness and diversity and these sort of things. That's not, you, those qualifiers just do not apply to a, a statistical recipe. What the heck? So first, I think what, what the, the, the community needs is to develop you know, a bit of antibodies. Um, tolerance, is is not about anything goes you know it's it, it's not there is a, a big confusion that uh, you know we live in a past truth world where you have my truth their truth we can all agree that uh, there is as many truth as there are human people uh, yeah no science is not that I mean you, you need to have you know it, it, it's not like absolute relativism, and as long as you're, everybody is positive and have positive emotion, it's all good. Uh, you, you need to be, I mean, I think part of how can really be done is to become a lot more intolerant when it comes to intellectual fraud, and also to stand up to point it out when it's, it's literally fraud. Yeah, we often get kind of approached maybe on kind of a weekly basis by companies that want to kind of analyze low catch. And then when you kind of dig a little bit deeper, you realize that this analysis is actually paid for. Um, how much of an issue would you say that is for the supply chain industry and for people who don't realize that a lot of that analysis is kind of paid off? <laughs> That's a massive problem. I mean, the, uh, I think one of the problems that, that we had uh, is that with the di disappearance of the professional press, which is now, you know, that has dwindled next to nothing due to, due to the internet, the thing is, what we are left is either Google, where it's like everything and everything, um, just uh, just uh, just dig through literally mountains of information, and then uh, we have we have market analysts that have grown bigger and bigger and bigger. And if we look, you know, at the you know the G company doing market analyst, it's very funny. I mean, ten years ago. I would have thought that those people should have, you know, disappeared. After all, what is the point? Uh, their, their value of those market analysts was to, um, to bring uh, transparency to fairly opaque businesses because it was very hard to even know which suppliers existed. So, you know, but, uh, generation of my parents, if you wanted to know which supplier existed in, uh, I don't know, in Mexico to do anything, Literally, it was fairly opaque. You could take the yellow pages of, you know, uh, 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 the local yellow pages and try to figure out for yourself, but that was pretty much it. It was just exceedingly hard to get any, any knowledge. So you could go to trade shows, that was one option. Um, and, and the other option was to actually go to market analysts that would at least give you the list of relevant players. Um, but with the internet, the list of relevant players, it at the fingertip. You just, you know, query, you know, 
uh, demand forecasting software, enterprise, on Google, you would get the list of who are the 50 companies doing that worldwide uh, within, within literally minutes. So, so what is, and I would have think that those market analysts would have pretty much disappeared for a lack of interest. But it turned out that they have grown massively. If you look the last decade, they have done overall, you know, a five to 10 X growth over the last decades. And literally me, Locad, as a CEO of, of, of a software company, twice a week, they have representative of those companies who are knocking on my door and asking me and say, well, you know what, if you just pay, um, we are, you're going to be listed on a report in a positive, a positive note. And, and literally, it's, it's what I call pay to play. So it's literally, if you pay a little, we are just saying that you're, you're a modest player. If you go for, you know, the, the higher subscription rate, you know, you, 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 you can be um, you can be a cool vendor, and if you if you go for the the higher higher subscription, then um, then you can be a thought leader, and then if you if you pay even more, you can be a market leader, and if you really pay you know top notch money, uh, you, you you can be an innovation leader and whatnot. And literally, there is like a grid uh, of of all the, the things, and and literally, what is interesting is that those. Uh, you are, as a software vendor, you have a, a, a real problem. It's very difficult to reach your clients, you know, um, because you can't do, you can't buy, you know, mass media because it's not, it's not focused enough. So you can't buy TV ads. You can't, uh, you, there are plenty of things that you can't do because they are, they are not suitable for a B2B market. Trade shows have, have dwindled almost next to nothing. And, uh, and, and with internet, I mean, people are, they, there are so many people trying to reach so many people, it's very, very difficult. And, and so market analysts became literally one of the prime marketing channels of tech vendors in general. And that's explained, you know, during the last five to 10 years, why they have grown so much. So who are, as, as market analysts, who are you selling to? Well, the answer is you're not selling to clients, obviously. And, I mean, the end clients, just because those people, they have Google and Google has solved the problem for them. So you're selling to the vendors. And it turned out that the willingness to pay the willingness to pay is an order of magnitude better, uh, greater on the vendor side than it ever was on the client side when it comes you know, to this vendor-client relationship for, 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 for tech and, and software. Okay, if we start sort of bringing everything sort of together now, um, what can the supply chain industry do as a whole kind of looking forward to, to being better? Um, what can we do to kind of ensure that kind of the, the best players and the, the, the most honest and the best solutions kind of emerge? Um, again, I think the software industry itself, and, and I say software, I mean um, uh, software engineering, is a very good uh, uh, is a very good uh, illustration of, of of I would say of uh, of correct intellectual practices done right. You know, it, it's uh, first there is a very very high degree of transparency. I mean, if you look at the ethos of the, for example, the open source movement, it's it's very interesting. I mean. One of the reasons why, for example, Microsoft is embracing open source is that they realize that it, it, this, this super high degree of transparency, you see, what is, was actually one of the key to produce better software. It was, it was not a problem of, of licensing fees. You know, Microsoft has embraced open source and they are more profitable than ever. So it's not uh, the fact that the software, I mean, you can license it one way, another way. There are many different paths. But what, what really open source did, you know, for the software industry was to bring a higher level of rationality, a, a higher level of transparency and, and of ethics in the way uh, uh, people can even, you know, approach problems. Um, if I, if I look at, at supply chains right nowadays, I mean, it's still fairly opaque. There is very few people who are, I would say, discussing in depth all the things that, um, that, that do not work. And if you look at um, the sort of discussion that happens on, supply, uh, on, on software engineering forums, the amount of, you know, of negativity is very high. And, and people say, oh, that's how can you even tolerate that? There are so people that are so uh, mad at each other. They are, they are literally, you know, they are fighting super harshly on the problem. The, and, and when people look at that, they say, woof, it, it's, it feels fairly uncivilized. And, uh, but, you know, 
this is what uh, rationality is about. It's the, the idea that there is a lot of, of infighting on ideas, you know, and, and superior stuff emerge. So I'm not saying that you, you need to become a jerk, you know, like, uh, like a, a complete uh, hacker uh, 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 in the sense of uh, being an insufferable person. That's not the, the core message. The message is that uh, you have to, if, to, to learn to stand up for, for things which also means that you stand against things. You know, it's not all positive. If, if you really believe in something to be true, then when somebody, you know, promotes the exact opposite, you have to stand up and say, well, I politely but firmly disagree. And uh, this sort of discussion happens, you know, very naturally on, I would say, online um, software engineering forums. Uh, on the supply chain side, I would say people are usually very quiet and they are very afraid to speak out. I would still, I would say, again, that, that stereotype, still very afraid to stand up and say, uh, no, frankly, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm calling you on that. I, I believe that it's, uh, it, it can't possibly even be remotely true. And, uh, and for example, if I go back to this, um, this, uh, uh, this post about a forecasting technology that was more inclusive, you know, I'm taking the opportunity to taste it now, but you know, um, I, was, I wasn't strong enough to actually post a nasty comment about that, you know, I kept quiet. Uh, and, and I believe that illustrated a bit, you know, the sort of weakness that are running deep where uh, people are getting away with literally uh, insane claims and, and we don't collectively have the strength to stand up. And, I, and by the way, you know, my apology to all the audience, I, I didn't have, uh, you know, uh, the, the courage to make a super sarcastic comment about uh, inclusivity because I was thinking, oh, boy, this is, such, this is such a bomb. I mean, people are going to call me a Nazi on that. <sighs> yet, yet, it has to be done. Okay, we'll have to wrap it up there, but I think you're kind of inviting a bit more abuse on the videos now. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's everything for this week. Thanks very much for tuning in, and we'll see you again in the next episode. Bye for now.